Well, hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. Today we'll be talking about congenital heart disease for the Comlex and USMLE board exam. This is a fairly high yield topic and as the number of surgical and medical techniques have improved, more and more children are now reaching adulthood and it's usually estimated that over a million adults in the United States surviving uh, with congenital heart disease are present. And so it's a really important and high yield topic that you should be aware of. Let's start off by talking about pulmonic stenosis. So in pulmonic stenosis, there's the stenosis of the pulmonic valve, okay, and that causes an increased resistance to the right ventricular outflow. It also raises the right ventricular pressure and it puts a limit on the pulmonary blood flow. Understand that pulmonary stenosis is often congenital. It's associated with other cardiac lesions. So patients who come in, you'll probably see them, um, you know, presenting sometimes asymptomatic, but severe cases will have signs of right-sided heart failure. So pulmonic stenosis, think about the right side of the heart. Patients have right-sided heart failure. There's also high-pitched systolic ejection murmur, maximal in the second left interspace with the radiation to the left shoulder, okay? Now, the mnemonic for A, P, T, and M for localizing the murmurs is important here. Again, the murmur here is high-pitched systolic ejection murmur, maximal at the second left interspace with radiation to the left shoulder. There is an increase in uh, right ventricular impulse, Physicians can often feel a palpable thrill at the second left intercostal space. And on EKG, you have signs of right ventricular hypertrophy. Also, um, the echocardiogram or Doppler is diagnostic. So on the boards, if they ask you a question, you know, um, what is the diagnostic test for this condition, you're going to pick the echo. Keep in mind that the P2 is delayed or it's soft or even absent sometimes. And there's an ejection click often present which decreases with inspiration. Um, the only right heart oscillatory event that decreases with inspiration is that ejection click which is often present and it's pulmonic stenosis. Also understand some of the clinical variations that you may find on patients. Uh, patients um, generally present with clubbing of the fingers um, it's a very common sign that you want to associate with pulmonic stenosis. And mild pulmonic stenosis is present if the peak gradient by the echo or Doppler is less than 30 mmHg, whereas moderate is present if it's between 30 to 60, and it's severe if the peak gradient is greater than 60 mm in case they give you that number on the boards. And keep in mind that on examination, there's often a palpable parasternal lift Again, that's due to the right ventricular hypertrophy and the ho loud, harsh systolic murmur um, that's present. The murmur, as we mentioned, radiates to the left shoulder. And on clinical exams, sometimes um, the second sound is obscured by the murmur in severe cases. Okay. Um, the right-sided S4 gallops may be best heard in the right subclavicular area. Okay. And um, keep in mind that, you know, pulmonic valve regurgitation is relatively uncommon in primary pulmonic stenosis. Um, and it also is very difficult to hear. So that's some of the key signs and symptoms that you look for in your physical exam on the patient. Now what about the um, EKG findings? Well, on EKG findings, uh, you're definitely going to see right atrial and right ventricular hypertrophy. So the P waves are abnormally tall in leads 2, 3, and AVF, indicating right atrial abnormality, okay? And the frontal QRS axis is oriented rightwards. So it's deep, um, there's a deep S in 1, okay? And there's also uh, QX complexes in 2, 3, and AVF. So that's a little bit difficult to find on your board exam, but if you look at the right atrial hypertrophy in 2-3 AVF, uh, that should also give you a good clue that this may be talking about um, pulmonic stenosis. Again, the rightward axis and 12 R waves in V1 indicate right ventricular hypertrophy. So remember that fact. The rightward axis, okay, and 
the tall r wave in v1. For the axis, you're going to look at 1 and ABF. Now, some of the other things that you want to understand is that catheterization is usually unnecessary for diagnosis. Um, it should be used only if the data are unclear or if, you know, preparation for either a percutaneous intervention or surgery uh, becomes necessary. The other thing that the boards will um, want you to understand is some of the key things about the treatment. Well, patients with mild pulmonic stenosis generally have a normal lifespan and no intervention. Moderates may be, you know, asymptomatic, and uh, the degree of stenosis does worsen in, with time. Um, and so serial follow-ups is really important. So the class one indications for intervention include all symptomatic patients and all those with a resting peak gradient with over 60 mmHg or mean uh, greater than 40 mmHg regardless of the symptoms um, is considered class 1. So keep in mind that in these patients percutaneous balloon valvuloplasty uh, is highly successful in domed valve patients and it's the treatment of choice. So on the boards echo and then the next choice if it's class 1 percutaneous balloon valvuloplasty. Also surgical commissurotomy can also be done or you know pulmonic valve uh, replacement when there is um, severe signs of pulmonic stenosis. Keep in mind that all symptomatic patients and all symptomatic patients whose peak pulmonary valve gradient is greater than 60 uh, should be referred to the cardiologist immediately. That was a board review of pulmonic stenosis. Please visit www.comlexflashcards.com for additional Comlex and USMLE board review podcasts, and thank you for listening.